Trying to figure out the strongest Pokemon is pretty easy when you have a god that's literally stated to create everything. You can't get much more out of that topic. Now trying to see who is the strongest out of every region, that's something we can talk about. Hello friends, my name is Pokey and today we are going to be talking about the strongest Pokemon in each region in the Pokemon franchise. Let me lay down the criteria and how I want to formulate this list. Now for this video, we're going to be using three different rules as our basis for the groundwork of this video. Now number one is going to be strongest forms. Each Pokemon will be at their strongest pretty you know, simple. Number two, we're going to be including the feats and statements of each individual Pokemon. And number three, this list will include legendaries and mythicals. Now that's enough of me rambling, let's get started with the list. Now our first region is going to be Kanto, and this one's pretty easy, it's it's going to be Mewtwo. I mean, it's either that or the legendary birds. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm not forgetting about Mew, but it's not Mew and here's why. Now for starters, Mew and Mewtwo actually fought in the first Pokemon movie, and although Mew was overwhelming Mewtwo, I don't think that Mewtwo is necessarily weaker than Mew. The reason being is that that was a base Mewtwo. That's not including Megas or even Shadow Pokemon Tournament DX Mewtwo. And we've seen the kind of stuff that Mega Mewtwo can do, like destroying the planet as Shadow DX, and also holding back 50% Zygarde in the manga. So with all those feats, Mewtwo is definitely stronger than Mew. Now for Johto, this one's a little bit tricky. Now you might be asking, why wouldn't it be just Lugia and Ho-Oh? And here's why. There's actually a Pokemon that's even stronger than Ho-Oh and Lugia, depending on the means and the situation, and that is a regular Pokemon, not even legendary or mythical it is unknown. Now, unknown can actually grant wishes to its user, which could be way more powerful than whatever Lugia and Ho-Oh could do, but the only thing about that is it's less consistent than just saying Ho-Oh and Lugia are more powerful. Now, if you want a more realistic answer, it's going to be Ho-Oh and Lugia, but if you want a more intricate and specific answer, it's going to be unknown. Now, coming in next is going to be the Hoenn region. Now, this one should be pretty easy. It's going to be Rayquaza. I mean, come on. Rayquaza is literally the Pokemon that keeps Groudon and Kyogre in check. It's being Deoxys on numerous occasions. The Reggie Trio isn't going to be enough to stop it because they're only a fraction of what Regigigas' true power is. Especially since Groudon and Kyogre are just more powerful versions than the Regis because Groudon and Kyogre can control more than their respective element. Now coming in next is going to be the center region, which is going to be Shaman, obviously, because Shaman's just the coolest mythical of all time. No, I'm just joking. It's it's Arceus. There's, there's just no competition. Now, Unova is a very interesting one because it's between two very different Pokemon. Obviously, the original dragon is going to be a contender. That's no question about it. But Genesect and Victini are very very interesting choices here because Genesect actually battled against Mewtwo and Victini is actually very powerful since it is the victory Pokemon and can grant victory as long as it has a trainer. Now the real battle is actually just Curum and Victini because Genesect was actually not used by Team Plasma once they actually encountered Curum, so that means Curum was obviously stronger. Now I'm going to give it a Curum here because the original dragon is stated to be the strongest dragon type before Gen 6, obviously can be outdated, that's why we're only putting it up to Gen 5. And Victini is just too experience that and the fact that it needs a trainer to even activate its power in the first place. Now I will say that Victini is a lot more powerful than Zekrom and Reshiram because during the pillar part in the movie, it actually was able to take out all of the pillars at once, whereas Zekrom and Reshiram struggled to take even one. Now the Kalos region is actually pretty easy, it's Zygarde 100 because it's stated to overwhelm the powers of Xerneas and Yveltal. That's pretty plain and simple, and there's not really many legendaries and mythicals in the Kalos region anyways. Now I will say that Hoopa isn't really canon, like the actual Pokemon is canon, but it's movies continuity with the XY anime is very, very iffy, and that's a whole gray area. So no, Hoopa is not stronger than Zygarde and can't just summon all the legendaries. Although it's Hoopa rings can use dimensional travel to an extent. I just wanted to point that out in case someone brought up Hoopa in the comments. Just keep in mind that the Hoopa movie isn't really canon. Even if you want to say that the Hoopa movie canon, like let's just say and disregard everything that the Hoopa movie is in fact canon, Zygarde is just so much more stronger and much more faster than Hoopa that it wouldn't even be able to react to any of its attacks and even summon any legendary mythical Pokemon in order to defend itself. I mean, Zygarde 100% was able to overwhelm and beat Ultra Necrozma in the manga. Ultra Necrozma has enough power to power all of Ultra Space, and Ultra Space includes a countless number of wormholes. Each wormhole is its own universe. So its light was so powerful that it was able to stabilize an entire dimension's worth of universes. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think Hoopa is going to survive any hit from Zygarde when he punches him through the freaking skull. And speaking of Ultra Necrozma, he's the strongest Pokemon in the Alola region. I mean, Come on, it's so obvious. Necrozma was able to absorb Lunala and Sogaleo in the manga, in the anime, 
and in the freaking games. Not to mention he has all of the Ultra Beasts under his command once he absorbs Sogaleo or Lunala, once he becomes Ultra Necrozma, that is. And all the Tapus aren't going to do anything if they can't even stand against Logaleo and Lunala. That's just facts. Now for Gen 8, I think my answer is a little bit controversial, considering the fact that I think Eternatus is the strongest Pokemon in Galar. The reason being that it takes both Zamazenta and Zacian to even beat Eternatus. Now if you want to be technical about it, sure, Zamazenta and Zacian are definitely the stronger Pokemon, but Eternatus is definitely stronger individually. Now as for Paldea, I think there's genuinely just two different choices, and that is either Maradon or Caridon or Terrapagos. The reason I'm going to side with Caridon and Maradon is purely because of the fact that we have more feats and statements to go off of. First things first, Caradon was actually able to split the land of Paldea, and this is even more impressive considering the fact that Paldea is based off of Spain, a country. That and the fact that Maradon and Caradon were both able to take down the AI professors. And as for Terrapagos, I just don't see it coming out on top. Being able to have a key connection to Terrastalizing is just not enough to actually put it above Caradon and Maradon, especially in Pokemon Horizons where we barely get to see anything of it. To be fair though, I think it's unfair to actually go off of what we have right now since Serapagos is just going to grow and grow even further in the Pokemon Horizons anime. But as of right now, Maradon and Caradon are going to take the cake, especially since the Ruin Pokemon don't seem to be actually stronger than Maradon and Caradon, and let me talk about that. They suffer from the same reason as Terrapagos, where they just don't have much to go off of. Even with Chiyu being 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit hot, which is pretty hot, Maradon and Caradon just have more comfortable and consistent feats. And with Caradon's strength of splitting a country and Maradon's speed of being faster than lightning, and since they're both equal, yeah, I don't see a Firefish coming out on top, guys. I really don't. But that, my friends, is going to be my list on the strongest Pokemon from each region. Region. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to leave a like and subscribe because it helps me out so so much and friends I will see you in the next one. Peace